Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Saturday, March 16th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 168 days, the game against Michigan in 259 days, our series on the fallout from the Tony Alford departure from Ohio State running backs coach to Michigan running backs coach continues today. Yesterday, we talked to Mark Giffler about the recruiting fallout and what this might mean on the recruiting trail for 2025 and beyond. Today, we're going to be talking about what it might mean on the football field this year. We're going to be doing that with Ross Fulton the X's and O's guru at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And when we have Ross on the show, we are sponsored by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, proudly offering nationally acclaimed USDA prime steaks, seafood and sushi, impeccable service, live entertainment, and an attention to detail that is simply unmatched. Just go to JeffRuby.com slash Columbus to check out the menu and make a reservation today. All right, Ross, the timing of this move, Tony Alford to Michigan, you know, the, the destination of this move is obviously kind of the big story. The timing of this move also not great. It was, you know, talked to Mark a little bit yesterday. It's not great for recruiting for 2025. Not great for the fact that you're already a couple practices in the spring ball. I think the real question is how big of a deal of this is this in terms of, hey, Chip Kelly is there. He's shown his, you know, put out his new playbook. He's presumably talked to the staff about, you know, the new terminology and all that kind of stuff. There are only two practices into the spring, but, you know, how, how much did, is Ohio State potentially getting caught with their pants down here? I don't think it that much. Um, I mean, again, as we've talked about, I mean, Chip Kelly is like, there's not a new playbook, quote unquote, right? Like it's a lot of, it's primarily what they've been doing at Ohio State. So, you know, Tony Alford was going to know that regardless of what, if he left a month ago, two months ago, et cetera. Um, you know, Ryan Day talked about they, they're keeping the same ter terminology to make it easier on the players and Chip Kelly's adopting their terminology. So like, that doesn't mean there won't be like changes in what they emphasize and like around the edges. Um, but it does. Um, I don't think just by the fact that they've had two spring practices, like Tony Alford would have that information regardless. Um, you know, and it, it, again, like the terminology, like an opposing teams, that doesn't matter for an opposing team. Right. Like as we well know, the only thing that matters is your signals. Um, and uh, that obviously like, they're you're gonna have to change your signals either way that they i mean they have plenty of time to do that again like in two practices they probably weren't implementing a lot of that um so i you know i do think it's obviously not great in terms of like continuity once you you sort of kicked off the season here quote unquote um uh, but i don't think it, it the scheme wise it's gonna have like that big of an impact i mean by the time you play michigan like everything you do on scheme wise is on film anyways so in terms of the playbook itself, I mean, there was a report out of Michigan that, you know, the negotiation has been going on for weeks and Tony Alford's bringing the playbook with him and he's got he's got the whole thing. And Tony Alford jumped on Twitter to address. He replied to one of the tweets about that and just replied, quote, way false. So uh, that's even more false than false, I guess. But, you know, I mean, if if he does have the, you know, the whole playbook, I mean, how much is in the playbook that they haven't put on film yet or that, you know, they're maybe saving for Michigan. Is that stuff that obviously they're not, you know, working on the secret play to beat Michigan on day two of spring practice. Right. But how much of that stuff evolves between March 14th and November 30th this year? And how much of that is already kind of out there and then they might have to change things. So uh, as far as I know, I don't think there is like one, playbook i don't think you know a lot of coaches don't put together like a physically well no one would do it physically anymore but a single digital copy of all our plays in one place i mean some do like nick saban's always had one that everyone on the internet can find um that has never prevented nick saban's defenses from being really good i think this is like a very overblown thing that stems from the misconception that there's a lot of different plays out there that are unique to one team. Like, again, everyone runs the same stuff. Like Michigan has nine months, right? Like they have plenty of hours. They could sit there and recreate Ohio State's entire playbook. And like the concepts are 85% of what they do overlaps with what, what Michigan has been running. So that doesn't mean that they don't emphasize different things. They don't call it different things. They don't run it from different personnel packages and the like, but it's again, like inside zone, outside zone, power, counter tray. Like these are not 
you know, snag, white cross. Like they're, they're the, I can drill these concepts off them at the top of my head because everyone uses them. So I, again, like Tony Alfred, like, you know, he's going to have a lot of information, but like coaches move around a lot. Um, coaches go to coaching clinics. As I said, like Nick Saban was literally, literally and figuratively an open book on their system, which is why in part why you see a ton of discussion of, you know, their man matching concepts and things that, that the Alabama and his, his proteges do because they like to talk about it so much at coaching clinics um, and, and invite people down. So I just don't think, again, like, as I said, the most acute thing is like, you, you would have to change your signals. I would assume they kind of, they would probably do that year to year anyway. Um, and maybe render moot by helmets, uh, microphones anyways. So I, I just, I don't think there's like some secret sauce out there that like, he's going to have access to. I mean, to your question, like I'm ass assuming that, I mean, Chip Kelly got here relatively late. So may this may be a little bit, not entirely on point. I'm sure they've talked through the nuts and bolts of like what they want to do offensively, what they want to change relative to the last couple of years. But like, yeah, like anything specific for Michigan, like if you're pulling out some kind of gadget play that they, that they wouldn't have practiced that yet. And, like those things just don't matter as much as people want to make them out to be. You mentioned the helmet technology there, and I feel like that's kind of a, been an, a little bit of an underreported piece of this season because there's so much stuff changing with college football. And that's just, you know, that's like 13th on the list. And in normal year, it might be first. And you've got all the conferences changing in the college football playoff and all the other stuff. So it's kind of gotten a little bit lost. How much does that impact, you know, I, if the, you know, the signals, like you said, they're going to change them anyway, but it feels like the whole game is going to change around the signaling and the helmet technology going in next year, potentially. Yeah. I mean, that'll be, it'll be really interesting. I don't know what teams are. Cause like in the NFL, people use it, but most teams huddle, right? So you, you, you send the signal into the quarterback through their helmet and they relay it in the huddle. If you want to know huddle, I, I, I don't know how that's going to work. I, I don't think the plan is to give everyone, uh, radios in their helmets. So I think there's, there would still be signaling involved. It'll be interesting to see if, whether it leads to more use of huddling. We're starting to see like sort of a return to that in some ways. Uh, obviously Michigan was a big example of that. Uh, they huddled all the time. So I don't know. It'll be interesting again to see the impact, but yeah, I think that'll have a bigger impact than anything like Tony Alford taking stuff to, <laughs> to Michigan will. All right. And then finally, I just want to ask sort of the on-field impact. I asked Mark about this on yester yesterday's show, and he didn't seem to think that this was going to make a huge impact on this year's team just because they have two really experienced veteran backs at the head of the running back class. Do you have any concerns that this is going to represent a real challenge for Ohio State in the running back room or on offense in general, losing Tony Alfred at this point of the, uh, at this point of the calendar? I mean, I no, I would agree with Mark. I would, I'm, I'm sorry, this will probably anger running back coaches everywhere, but if I had to pick one position coach that I would consider the least important, it's the running backs coach. Um, because I think so much of playing running back is based on your natural ability and vision. That does not diminish that there's things to work on. It's just a less technical, less developmental position than some other ones. And as you said, there's, you know, to me, the biggest impact of a running back coach has is in the uh, recruiting department because running backs are sort of think they're often born, uh, not made. And so I just think that, you know, to the extent it has an impact there, that would matter. But I just don't think, particularly with Travion Henderson, Quinchon Junkins, I mean, Tony Alford was not in charge of the run game. He was in charge of things scheme wise. So, yeah, I, I see a pretty limited impact as well. All right. Well, that's not going to keep us from talking about Tony Alford being at Michigan. I'm sure that's so you're going to be talking about Michigan quite a bit the rest of the year. I'm sure the Tony Alford story is going to be quite a story all throughout the year as well. Boy, it's going to be a fascinating year for Ohio State football, for Michigan football, for college football in general. Man, oh man, is there going to be a lot to talk about. And a great place to talk about it all is at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Tony, Kevin, and I cover the team. 
Mark covers recruiting. Ross and our whole team of X's and O's gurus make you a smarter football fan. That's a, they are all on the huddle board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse. That's where we talk to you, make you a smarter football fan, let you know what we're hearing behind the scenes and much, much more. You want to get the inside details on Ohio State football? Just go to BuckeyeHuddle.com and sign up to become a member today. Also, you can find us on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. We are right about to cross the 20,000 subscriber mark on uh, YouTube. So that's pretty fun for us. Hope to uh, see you there as well. And we also hope to see you at Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, the award-winning upscale steakhouse in downtown Columbus, named one of the top 50 steakhouses in America by Food Network, jeffruby.com slash Columbus, to check out the menu and make a reservation today. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.